Hello, welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. And if you're watching this just after it's been released, I give you permission to pause it and come back to it later and watch us on the live stream that should still be ongoing. Um, and if you're still with me now, I presume that you're watching this after watching the live stream or you don't like live streams, and that's fine. Um, this is going to be Sudoku rather than the chance of Sinar in this video. And we're looking at a puzzle by Eric Rathbun called The Merry-Go-Round. I'm looking forward to giving it a go. Eric always gives us a nice challenge and uh, that's what I want today. So um, what else have we got going on apart from the live stream? We've got um, the Kickstarter released today, I believe, fingers crossed, I hope that has happened. Um, do check out the links under the video for that. And we've also got um, a few day, a week left on our Solver in Sudoku Land Challenge on Patreon. The crossword video on Patreon, Simon Solve of Jay Dyer on the channel. Every Friday there's a, there's a crossword video as well on the channel. And we've got Sven Sudoku about all our apps on the links under the video, uh, which include Lion Sudoku, which has various palindromes. It includes killer Sudoku, like we have in today's puzzle. Um, but there we go. This is what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the merry-go-round by Eric Rathbun. And the rules first are normal Sudoku rules apply. One to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Digits in a cage can't repeat. I think that's obvious from the linear nature of the cages. And they sum to the given total. So those three cells add up to 21. Numbers cannot repeat along the diagonals. So that is going to be a set of the numbers from one to nine. Gray lines are palindromes that read the same forwards and backwards. So that digit will be the same as that. The digits separated by the single lone white dot have a difference of one. I like to imagine this white dot is you on the merry-go-round, the only person on it having a whale of a time. Anyway, give it a try. Thanks to Eric Rathbun for sending it. I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. And let's get cracking with 986 in the 23 cage and 987 in the 24. Now, the palindrome is immediately going to tell us, oh, I miswrote 987 as instead of 986. Right, the palindrome is going to tell us that that's not a 6 and that's not a 7. They have to be the same. I might even colour them the same in case that's going to matter. This has to be 6, 8 or 9 on the palindrome. On this palindrome, that is also 6, 8 or 9. Now, down here, we have a 22 cage. Um, that one has to be 7, 8 or 9, as does that cell. And these two are the same. Let's make them bright blue. Although somebody said they can't see bright blue on my screen lately, which is a shame and puzzling to me. Um, then what? This 22 cage is either 985 or 976. Or can we extend the same principle to the circles in the middle? Um, not really. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities that could be in a 6 cage and a 7 cage, or in a 7 cage and an 8 cage. That doesn't feel like it's worth marking up, but... What I have marked up hasn't been that successful yet. Maybe I should colour those green and see where they go. That could be the same shade of green. Well, at this 21 cage, it is a bit restricted. You couldn't have a digit below a 4 in it, but there's quite a few possibilities. Maybe... Well, you couldn't have a 4 digit in a... Right. Oh, no, not right. That could still be a four with a four there. Hmm. This is a bit difficult to process. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not seeing what might be, what Eric might have thought would be obvious about how this solves. Um, ooh, I suppose that can't be any of red, blue, or orange, so it's not 7, 8, or 9. Is that interesting? No. It's, I mean, it exists, it's a thing, but it's not a useful thing. Ah, that can't be bright blue. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe. Let's make that one yellow. Because it's in the same row as bright blue, it's not bright blue. 
does bright blue have to appear in this box? No, much better than that. Bright blue cannot appear in this cage. Shouldn't have called it a box. That is not bright blue because it's in the same column as bright blue down there. That is not bright blue because its counterpart on the palindrome is in the same cage as bright blue. And that is not bright blue because it's in the same row as bright blue. Therefore, bright blue is a digit from 789 that is not in 689. And like those old riddles, I am in water but not in ice, that has to be a 7. That's good. That's really neat as a start as well. Now, there's probably a counterpart digit in this cage that ha we have to make a six because it can't be somewhere else. Um, yellow could be a six. And as far as I can see, green could be a six. Um, yellow and green, could they? Wow. No, I don't, I, I don't think it's as clear cut what happens next. That was a lovely seven find. Probably does nothing else in the puzzle at all. Oh, it stops this being a seven one cage. So those digits are now two, three, five or six. Given the palindromes, those are two, three, five or six. The counterparts on the palindrome are five, two, four or one. Their numbers on the on their palindrome, sorry, in the cages, they're five, four, two, or one. Their counterparts on the palindrome are then one, two, four, or five, but those are exactly the digits I would have written in there as possible at the start. So I didn't get anything done. Um, right, let's think about these then. They're from five, six, eight, and nine because of this 22 cage. So that is five, six, eight, or nine. Let's color these two. New colour, purple. Let's colour this one and this one dark blue. No, not dark blue, because why put that next to purple deliberately? Let's make them grey. Five, six, eight, or nine there. Now, the comparison between those and these, what's that going to tell me? Not a lot, although... Yeah, I have to now be careful about what could be the same here. Because grey could be the same as either green or orange. Purple could be the same as green. And one of them is going to have to be the same as one of these. Because neither purple or grey can be yellow. They share a column there and a cage there. So if yellow was 8 or 9, uh, no, if yellow was in this 22 cage, it would be... Ah, yellow is not in the 22 cage. Oh, and yet, we, sorry, we do know the makeup of the 22 cage because we've got a 7. This is absolutely perfect. I've stumbled somehow on the right analysis. The 22 cage now has to be 769. That was the simple thing to see, which I didn't bother with the simple thing because this is cracking the cryptic. Why would you? That's a 6-9 pair. Now, I think, yes, and then I stumbled on the fact that yellow can't be purple or grey, so it's not 6 or 9. So yellow is 8, orange is now 9, red is 8, and the same as yellow. Let's transform red into yellow by alchemy, or rather Sven's marvellous optics. Now, we're going to get an 8 in one of those cells. I'm about to deploy the dragon of diagonal, which is an entirely made-up entity. Um, one of those is an 8. Oh, maybe I'm not. I thought I was. Because, look, 8 can't be on the diagonal there in that box, or on the diagonal here in this box, because all those cells are ruled out by individual eights. So it must be on the diagonal in box three. One of those two is an eight. But on the other diagonal, I have a lot of possible options for where eight could be, surprisingly. Right, but this green has become six. Now in column two, we know where eight is. Now I don't have any options for where eight can be on the diagonal. Eight in box five is there. Eight in box three 
has gone on the diagonal and I can do the last eight in the puzzle. There we go, eight's marvelously complete. I do like the way this functions as a merry-go-round. I think it's very apt and skilled. Now, this cage, eight plus nine would need a four here. Eight plus six would need a seven. That puts four or seven here. Now, can it be blue seven? Oh no, much more importantly, I've got a nine looking down at purple. So purple is a six. Gray has become orange and nine. We're down to four colors for nine, eight, seven, six. In fact, might as well finish off the eight since I think I have posted them all. No, look, I've missed one, haven't I? That's an eight on the palindrome, but in the center of it and therefore of no interest. Um, sorry, palindrome centers, you don't do the biz. Now, that is now six, eight, so this is a seven. That's a seven on the palindrome. Oh, we don't giving sevens a color. Now, does that actually help? Yes, we get a seven here. Now we think about sevens on diagonals. Um, ooh, I've got sevens confined to these cells. Now, seven can't be there on that diagonal, so seven's in one of those two. And that's a seven. And that hasn't changed anything else I've done. Um, one of those two on the diagonal is a seven. Right, what, uh, oh, six, we can make all the same color, can't we? Let's make it purple. Sorry if you were rooting for a different color there. Now, that's six by Sudoku. One of those is six. It's not barred from the center of the palindrome. Ah, but it is barred off this diagonal. So one of those two is a six. Now that, ah, this can't be a six by Sudoku, not by cage logic. So that's a six. That gets a color. The color is purple and I put the six back in the cell as well. Now, that is a six by general Sudoku principles. We need a six on this diagonal. It's gonna to have to be there. And that gives us the last six in the grid. Also purple. That's good. Now, nines, that's become a nine. This is just Sudoku. There's a great deal of symmetry that I'm beginning to sense emerging in the placement of six, eight, sevens, and nines. That's a nine in box six. One of those two is a nine, not on the diagonal in box three, well, because we had it on the diagonal here. Now, one of those three is a nine. Looks like a, no, hang on. There's only one cell in this, in this box that's a nine. There it is. Um, now, diagonal needs one here. That's gonna give us our last two nines and we can get rid of anything we've written in those cells. Okay, so nines, eights, and sixes seem to be complete in the puzzle. We can, I must be able to finish these sevens somehow. Yeah, look, there's a seven there. I just can't do the Sudoku aspects today. Now the diagonal needs one, it's got to be there. That gives us a seven there. Those two are bright blue. That is all the big digits done in the puzzle. Now we can move on to the inner side of the, well, I wonder if we're gonna use that. Let's take sixes out of all of these cells. That means this is a three, five cage, and that's a one, two, four, triple. These two have to be three or five paired up, and they are a pair according to that cage. They're paired up with a pair that are four and two and they are paired up, therefore, on the palindrome with a two, four pair in the box. Um, right, now I feel this white dot is probably mattering about now. If that was a three, four pair, this would have to be one, two. If it's a two, five pair, this would have to be three, four. So if that's a three, four pair, this is one, two, and that is five. If this is two, five, that's three, four, and this is one. I don't know, that doesn't really 
resolve things. So let's do Sudoku. One, three, five there. Two, four pair there. Three, five pair down here. Three, five pair in this column. So the others are from one, two, four. The ones in this row are from one, two, four. That's from one, two, four. I have a bit of a feeling that we're going to go on a colouring jig in a moment. Um, this we don't know. One of these is from one, two, four, and the other is from three, five. So oh, it's going to come down to these diagonals again, isn't it? Now those are one, three, five in that row. Now, there is a 1 in one of these cells, because there isn't there, so that's not a 1. If it's a 5, that's a 1, this is a 3, 4 pair, and that's 2, 5. If it's a 3, this is a 1, 2 pair, and that's a 5. So if it's a 3, we get 4 up here. What did I say? If it's a five, we get one there, three, four here, and a two up there. Hmm, that hasn't quite resolved itself either. So I'm probably going to have to colour something again. So maybe I get rid of the colouring we've already done, because it's served its purpose for nine, eight, seven, and six. Let's colour twos and fours. We'll make those ones green, and that rules green out of these cells. Puts green in one of those two. Green in one of those two now. Ah, that is not green because of the merry-go-round. Green there, let's say green and grey add up to seven. That's grey. This one is not grey, therefore. We'll call it orange. But green and orange, oh no... Okay, I've slightly gone... Oh, no, that becomes orange. No, that's right. And now we know that green and grey add up to seven, so green and orange don't, so that is not green. That is green and is two or four, and we've now got a pair. And these others are from one, three, or five. Now, this one is odd, and that cell is even, and is not green. It's the opposite of green which is red today. So those ones are red. That must be red by Sudoku. That must be red and is two or four. Let's see if we can keep this going. Um, that is the opposite of red, so that's green. That can't be red, so that's green, that's red. Let's try and keep this going. One of those is red, one of those is green. I can't keep it going. Oh, I can. That, no, I don't know which of the... Ah, oh, let's use the diagonals. Now, one of those two is green. Ah, oh, red on this diagonal. Yeah, red on this diagonal has to be in the corner. Excellent. Oh, that's got to help. That becomes red. Now I can place one in box three in the corner. That's not a one in the center. Now, green still to place on the diagonal, but red is there, not a one. Um, and all the reds are placed now. That's become green. That's where green has to be. So I can do one in this box by avoiding red and green. I suspect I'm going to be able to do that everywhere in a moment. Green on this diagonal has to be there. Therefore, it's not here. And on this diagonal, we now need green to be in the corner. Lovely. Oh, that's really elegant, Eric. Absolute class in this puzzle. That becomes a one. Let's see if we can find these ones by by magical osmosis, by which I mean by Sudoku, by avoiding the colours green and red. I think we're going to find them all. We've got all the green and reds done, so that's a one in row three. Um, well, I don't know why I hit seven as a result of that. Um, oh, this is an ugly mess. Can't have two ones in the same column. 
So I've done something wrong. That's extraordinary. I thought it was all so beautiful and elegant and it seemed to be going so right that that has rather gobsmacked me. Let's go back quite a way to where I started the central merry-go-round and recolor. Because that's really weird. What went wrong there? This had to be a 3-5 pair, didn't it? You can't use 7 or 6. I mean, I'm sure we're okay up to this point. We can colour purple and orange. Green goes with grey to make 7, so it can't go with orange. So that's red. And that's red. This has to be right. That's red. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm prepared to do this all again because I'm just so confident the method was good and I don't understand what I've done wrong in the execution. One of the corner cells is two or four because this diagonal, sorry, is red because this diagonal needs a red on it. It's got to be in one of those two. So that's not red. So red in box three is there. So I've got that a different way. That might actually help. Red in row two is there. That's green. Um, this is really weird. That ones thing absolutely gobsmacked me. I don't even see what I did wrong. So let's hope I find out what I did wrong this time round. Red is in one of those two and one of those two. And that's not... Oh yeah, it is tidied up on... The diagonal, we need red on this diagonal. So there it is, and that's red. So then we go green again. And we get a green in one of those two. Green in one of those two, but it has to be there because it's two or four. So that's green, not on the diagonal. Green's in one of those two, one of these two, one of these two. Green is needed on this diagonal, so it has to be there. I'm doing the same things over again. Let's hope this isn't the definition of stupidity, but it may be. Green ends up going there. So one now has to avoid being red or green. That's a one. That's a one. And this is the worrying position. Because if that's not a one, this is a one. And now the one on the positive diagonal is going to have to be there. I haven't tried that before. The one and that, no, it doesn't work. So I'd actually done something wrong earlier in this puzzle. Wow, that is really frustrating for you as much as me. How has this gone wrong? It was working so beautifully. The colouring was great. I am absolutely at a loss to know what happened here. Yeah, that central digit can't be anything. It sees orange, red, green, and gray. Well, 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 what has happened? Okay, we'll rewind it all the way back to six, sevens, eights, and nines being done. Hope that bit was right, at least. Let's keep going backwards. I mean, I think we know what to do. We just did it wrong somehow. I did it wrong, obviously you didn't. Right, those can't have a six in. That's a three, five pair. Let's color them up. Different colors now, red and yellow. That's yellow, that's red. Those are palindromes. Yes, I may have just misinterpreted a rule some, somewhere. That's the sort of thing I'm well able to do. This has to be four or two. That's four or two, and they have to be different because they're paired to different things. So we get to create colors, green and um, dark blue there. Dark blue, oops, and green there. Then 
green in this column has to be here. Well now, are we already foul in the middle? Well, we're seeing blue, red, green and yellow. So that's all the two, three, four, five. So the middle is a one. Maybe that's the way to do it. I don't think it ever came out as a one before. Oh, I shouldn't have used yellow, should I? For three, five, I sh because we've used yellow. Let's make that um, dark green. There we go. Now, I haven't taken out the other colouring, so we're going to end up with a rainbow pattern this time, but fair enough. That's dark blue. That is red. This is just colouring, a colouring exercise now. I think that might be a better way to do it. We've got dark blue and a one to go here. Um, I mean, it's so beautiful at the moment. This can't be wrong. It's too beautiful to be wrong. I can fill that in with the dark green. Then this is red and one. And we've had dark green. So we've got bright green to go. That's there. This one is now dark blue. That's got to be right. Dark green's in one of those two. But on the diagonal, we need a bright green on this diagonal. It's got to be in the corner. And that probably finishes off... Well, dark, bright green in that column doesn't quite finish off these last two. Maybe I made a mistake on the white dot. Actually, that, that would be relief if that was possible. Now, what do we need on the other diagonal? We still need bright green on the other diagonal. That's got to go here. On the positive diagonal, it has to. Yep, so that's bright green. Right, so this is a one. That's a one. This is a color which we must be able to do. It's dark green. Um, this is a color which we can do. It's red. That's red. This is a one. That's a one. This is a color that's dark blue. Then we put dark blue in the middle. This is fine. I think this might be okay now, weirdly. Uh, the color missing is dark green there. So serious apologies to any colorblind people who are completely confused now, but it's been manageable for me to solve it this way. Now, let's look at this diagonal. We're only missing one color on it. We've got both blues. We don't have the dark green, so that goes in the corner. Dark green goes there and there and there. And they're finished off. Um, that's a 2-4 pair. This is a 3-5 pair, so we need a red. Um, we need a 1 and a colour. What's the colour we need down, uh, down in this box? Dark blue, there it is. That's the 1. So this is letting us place all the 1s. And they've all worked, and they're in a symmetrical pattern, which, again, feels right. That's dark blue. That's red. Red in the corner. Red there. Dark blue here. Right. Now, come on. Reds and... <laughs> Reds are 3-5. Bright greens are 3-5. We're going to do it with the dot now, and it's going to work, I insist. Bright greens are 2-4. Dark blues are 2-4. Now, the dot is telling us... Well, if that pair adds up to seven, it now can't be three, four there, because this would be two, five. So it has to be two, five here. Let's see if this actually works this time and wonder why I got it wrong before. Two, five there, red becomes three. Bright green, oh, three in the corner, proving its position, and that is right, and I'm so sorry about whatever I did wrong. 
Um, still under half an hour, so it's not that hard a puzzle, and that's more embarrassing than ever to have got it wrong, but that does sometimes happen. Anyway, there we go. That is the merry-go-round, full carousel colouring today, and uh, a complete glitch in the middle to apologise for. But we got through in the end, and we are finished. Thank you very much for watching, and hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.